the Great Eastern. Designed by Isambard Kingdom Brunel, launched in 1858, a ship that changed shipbuilding and seafaring forever. This model, made in 1978, is one of the most detailed maritime dioramas ever created. It shows the Great Eastern being built at John Scott Russell's shipyard at Millwall on the Thames in 1857. She was the largest ship ever built by an enormous margin. 211 meters long, she was almost twice as long as any ship that had ever been built. She was so long that she had to be built along the shore and launched sideways into the river. Her registered tonnage was six times more than any ship ever built. She could take 4,000 passengers, seven times more than ever before. Her hull was constructed with iron plates, riveted to iron frames. She was the first ship built with a double hull skin for added strength and safety, which wasn't widely adopted until well into the 20th century. She was the first to incorporate all three methods of propulsion, sail, propeller, and paddle wheels. And those enormous paddle wheels were 56 feet in diameter. The model shows how the giant ship shadowed the small town that goes on with its daily business. The building of this giant soon outgrew Scott Russell's yard at Millwall. A large number of workshops and men were needed to produce the various components of the hull and fittings. But the noise of construction became so bad that a private residence had to be boarded up and the occupants moved out. The public were fascinated and the press kept them informed. Here is an artist sketching the moment for the Illustrated London News. And here, locals sail upriver to get a view of Brunel's mighty ship. The building materials used in its construction range from wood to iron, with a large amount delivered by river using the traditional vessels such as Thames sailing barges. To work the iron components on site, a number of steam-powered machines were used for shaping and drilling the iron plates and frames. After a couple of years operating as a transatlantic passenger ship, the Great Eastern became a pioneer in the laying of subsea telegraphic cables and laid the first successful transatlantic cable to America. Here, Brunel and Scott Russell are shown on deck discussing the progress of the build with the plans laid out in front of them. Brunel suffered a stroke a couple of days later and subsequently died. In one of the great tragedies of maritime history, he never saw his magnificent ship at sea. But her working life was short-lived and troubled. Too far ahead of her time, she was scrapped on the River Mersey in 1889.